Welcome to Algebra 1, Unit 5, Lesson 5-6, Inverse Variation, Part 1. I'm Mr. Polarski, and our objective today is I will be able to solve inverse variations. Definition, inverse variation, an equation in the form xy is equal to k or y is equal to k divided by x, where k is not equal to zero is an inverse variation. For the most part, we're going to be writing our equations of inverse variation in this form here, y is equal to k divided by x. We will use this equation, x times y is equal to k, to find the constant of variation. The constant of variation for inverse variation is k. That's in this equation here, well it's in both equations, but we find the constant of variation k by finding the product of x and y for any ordered pair x comma y. These are the two equations we're going to be working with with inverse variation. Example 1t, writing an equation given a point. Suppose y varies with x and a point on the graph of the equation is 8, 9. Write an equation for the inverse variation. To do this, we first need to find the constant of variation, which we're going to use the equation xy is equal to k. We need to find k. We're going to use the point that's given to us, 8, 9, to do that. Remember, the first number is the x-coordinate, and the second number is the y-coordinate. So we simply substitute these numbers into this equation. So we get 8 times 9 is equal to k, and k is equal to 72. Now that's not our answer but that's the constant of variation, and we're going to use the equation y is equal to kx to write the equation for inverse variation. So y is equal to k divided by x. We substitute 72 in for k. So our solution here is y is equal to 72 divided by x. The process is use this equation, x times y is equal to k, to find the constant of variation then substitute that constant of variation into the equation y is equal to k divided by x. Part b, suppose y varies inversely with x and y is equal to 4 when x is equal to 6. Write an equation for the inverse variation. Some students get confused with this example because it's not worded exactly the same as part a. In part a, we were given a point. In part b, we are just told that y is equal to 4 and x is equal to 6, so the ordered pair is given to us in a different manner. But the process is still the same. We'll start with the equation xy is equal to k. And this is to find the constant of variation. We substitute 6 in for x and 4 in for y. So we get 6 times 4 is equal to k. So k is equal to the result of 6 times 4, which is 24. We take that result and we substitute it in to this equation, the equation for inverse variation, which is y is equal to k divided by x. Substitute that 24 in for k. So the equation for this inverse variation is y is equal to 24 divided by x. Example 2t, finding the missing coordinates. The points 5, 6, and 3y are two points on the graph of an inverse variation. Find the missing value. Again, working with inverse variations, we're going to be working with the idea that k is equal to x times y. Since both of these points are on the same graph, their products have to be the same. Now here's a pretty easy idea. 5 times 6 is 30, so we have to figure out what 3 times y is to give us 30. Well, 3 times 10 would give us 30, so the idea is y is good. this y, this y coordinate is going to be 30. Let's look at how to do the work. The equation I like to use here is x sub 1 times y sub 1 is equal to x sub 2 times y sub 2. Because their products have to be the same, we can make an equation out of this. The product of the x and y coordinates of the first point is equal to the product of the x and y coordinates of the second point. These subscripts just show the difference between the two different points. To do this, here's a trick I use. I label each point x sub 1, y sub 1, and then the other point is x sub 2, 
y sub 2. So in this problem, we'll be solving for the second y coordinate, y sub 2. We substitute these values into this equation. This equation you're always going to use for problems that you're being asked to find the missing coordinate. So in for x sub 1, I substitute 5. In for y sub 1, I substitute 6. In for x sub 2, I substitute 3. And y sub 2 is the value we're trying to calculate. Now we have a pretty simple equation to solve. 5 times 6 is 30, being equal to 3 times y sub 2. We divide each side by 3 to isolate the y sub 2, so we get y sub 2 being equal to 10, just like we discussed a moment ago. Now I know this example is not on your handout that you may have downloaded from my website. If you want, you can copy it down. We're going to do the same thing, but we're going to use the points x comma 6 and 9 comma 15. So both of these points are on the graph of an inverse variation. So we're going to use the equation x sub 1, y sub 1 is equal to x sub 2, y sub 2. Label our points x sub 1, y sub 1, and x sub 2, y sub 2, and substitute. And for x sub 1, well, that's what we're trying to solve for. So in for y sub 1, we'll substitute 6. So that'll give us 6 times x sub 1. Notice I did change the order, and that's okay. And for x sub 2, I substitute 9. And for y sub 2, I substitute 15. Simplifying and solving this equation, 6 times x sub 1 is equal to the product of 9 and 15, which is 135. We divide each side by 6 to isolate the x sub 1, or the x coordinate of the first point, to get x sub 1 is equal to the result of this division, 135 divided by 6, which gives us 22.5. So the missing x coordinate in this second example is 22.5. Example 3, T. Real-world problem solving, fulcrums. The weight needed to balance a lever varies inversely with the distance from the fulcrum to the weight. Well, what that means is um, the simplest fulcrum that I can think of to use here is a seesaw. One of my students in class said triangle, and I said, yeah, the triangle is a part of the seesaw. That's how we're showing the base. So in essence, what we need to figure out for part A, well, here's part A. A 120-pound weight is placed 5 feet from a fulcrum. How far from the fulcrum should an 80-pound weight be placed to balance the lever? Well, let's talk about this word fulcrum. The fulcrum is this pivot point right here. This is the fulcrum. And what we need to do in this problem, we're setting this problem up, is that 5 feet away from the fulcrum, we're going to place a 120-pound weight. What we have to figure out is how far away do we need to place an 80-pound weight to balance out this lever. One question I pose to my classes is, are we going to have to place this 80-pound weight inside of 5 feet or outside of 5 feet to balance out the 120 pounds that's placed at 5 feet? So that's what we're going to answer here. Where to put the 80 pound weight to balance out the 120 pounds on the left hand side. The equation that we use here since they vary inversely is the weight of the first object times the distance from the fulcrum of the first object being equal to the weight of the second object times the distance from the fulcrum of the second object. So let's take that equation down here and apply it to part A. The weight of the first object is 120, so we'll substitute that in for 120, and the distance from the fulcrum is 5, 5 feet to be exact. On the other side, we have an 80-pound weight, and we have to solve for how far away from the fulcrum the 80-pound weight has to be for it to be balanced. So we simplify and solve this equation. 120 times 5 is 600, being equal to 80 times the distance of the second object. We divide each side by 80 
and we get the distance that the second object has to be from the fulcrum for this lever to be balanced is 600 divided by 80, which if we use a calculator, that comes out to be 7.5 feet or 7.5 feet. So we'd put the 80 pound weight 7.5 feet away from the fulcrum for this lever to be balanced. Let's take a look at example B. Example B, a 50 pound weight is placed 4 feet from a fulcrum. What weight should you put 10 feet from the fulcrum to balance the lever? So this problem, we're being asked to find the weight, not the distance. So let's set this up on our lever. A 50 pound weight is placed 4 feet from the fulcrum. What weight needs to be 10 feet away? So we're solving for the weight. So using the equation from the first example, W sub 1 times D sub 1 is equal to W sub 2 times D sub 2, we're going to set up and solve. The first weight is 50 pounds, so we substitute that in for W sub 1. The first distance is 4, so we substitute that in for D sub 1. We're solving for the weight in this problem, so we're not going to substitute right now. The first distance is 10, or the second distance is 10, so we'll substitute that in for the D sub 2, and we're going to be solving for the W sub 2. Again, notice I switched the order here, and that's okay. Simplify and solve the equation. 50 times 4 is 200, being equal to 10 times W sub 2, divide each side by 10, the weight of the second object is going to be 20 pounds. This has been Mr. Polarski with inverse variations. Remember, finding the constant of variation for an inverse variation relies on using the product. So to find the constant of variation for an inverse variation, we multiply the two coordinates, x times y. The equation for an inverse variation is y is equal to k divided by x. I hope this lesson's helped you. Have a great day.